Exactly. So I'm going to speak about the Jamstack and the uh, setup of the Jamstack and how you can get from a zero, so basically no code to the like uh, deployment like in a few minutes. If you know what I'm doing, it, it's really fast. So this first, how many of you use the Jamstack or do something with the Jamstack? Okay, few of you. So maybe I hope I will learn or you will find something also interesting for you. So uh, my name is Samuel Snopko. That's my Twitter tag if you want to uh, ask me something in the future or anytime. I'm usually answering on the Twitter. That's me. Uh, There's like freelancing usually doing in the night. In my spare time, I'm working also full time here in Vienna. I'm here like uh, moved into Vienna three months ago and now I'm just uh, running through the various meetups, conferences and stuff and doing like advocate for the story block, which is the sponsor today and also like Vue.js and Nuck.js because I'm a big fan of the Vue.js and Star Wars as you can see from my t-shirt also. Uh, so I don't have a lot of sli uh, slides and uh, first of all, I have to tell that Gemstack is means JavaScript, API and markup. And for that, uh, there need to be an API. So headless is already a thing. I started to work uh, uh, in the Drupal 8 as I was a developer a few years ago, and it was not very, it was not a lot of fun. I mean, like a lot of people was telling me that it's really cool and uh, great, and I was like, hey, I think we can do better. So I was looking for a long, long, long time for something uh, useful and something how we can create a web easily, very fast, not blocking, not spending time of uh, hard coding the backend and doing really the stuff that customer take like like to love to see, which is the front end. I don't mean that front end is more important than the back end, but the most use cases uh, and the useful stuff is happening uh, in the front end. And if you are speaking with a customer, he's asking like, why is this look like this? And then we are spending so much time setting up uh, some backup stuff we could do better and we can automize it. So that's why I think as I find the headless approach uh, very useful. And what is the headless is, uh, uh, basically, you have a, you can have something like a own service on your server, or you have a, like a, a service uh, on a cloud, and uh, there are many solutions already out there. And a the few of the solutions I just pick here: the logos, that's a story block, contentful, Netlify CMS, Ghost, or Stray API. And you can find even more of them, like on the headlesscms.org, where it's like listing, and you can filter all the possible solutions out there. And I'm sure you can find something also for you. So this is like how we are going to do uh, today the API. So at the first, uh, I'm using to, I will be using Storyblock because I'm a big fan of the Storyblock and I think it's a great tool uh, to use and uh, it's really like enhance your uh, work uh, and creating creation of the website or applications, doesn't matter. So uh, this, the second thing is like front end, you can do it as you liked to do. So that what does it mean is like if you, if I worked in the old stuff, uh, headless, CM uh, sorry, CMSs, as I don't like to call it CMSs because there was like a whole environment. They were like saying you, okay, if you are going to write, uh, use this CMS, you have to use this templating language, you will do this this way, you will do this this way, and there was like not really a freedom that you couldn't choose even like the basic frameworks for your front end. And nowadays, uh, you can do the front end as you like. So you choose your backend service, which was, will be one of the these. And then you will choose one of your front-end services or frameworks you would like to code and you prefer. If it's a React, then you would go for the Next.js maybe. If it's uh, something more static, then you can go for Gr Gritsum, Gatsby, Hugo, or if you are like the view, uh, uh, on the view side of the JavaScript uh, framework, then you would go for the Next.js. And that will be also the sample. I will be showing you the whole sample and the Next.js. So this is basically my stack and now uh, that was almost, this is the, uh, the almost last slide. We are going to code and we are going to hack some uh, code and basically from a zero, we try to deploy in the next 15 minutes because I think I should have like something 20 minutes long talk. We try to get to the point that we deploy something and it will be publicly uh, uh, usable or like you could visit it also from your phones. So, no, not thanks. Let's jump to the code. So what do we have to go, uh, do? I prepare a few notes for my talk and a uh, markdown file. And first of all, we are going to create a Next application. So we just install a Next very fast and uh, we just use a yarn create Next app, which is basically a 
node package which uh, helps you create the next application and it will create the application in my current folder. So it's the, if the internet is working and everything works, then this will be a very nice live coding. At first, project name, we just use the, uh, the folder name. Uh, yeah, this description probably it's outstanding uh, project. It's, uh, I'm the author. I prefer yarn package, but if you want, you can use an NPM. So the UI framework, already the Vue.js have a big, a uh, lot of possibilities to choose a Vue framework, and there's already, they are connected to your next. I prefer, and trying to last times, uh, Tailwind CSS, so let's choose a Tailwind CSS. Uh, we are not going to uh, use any uh, server framework, and I would like to have an Axios and .env, because I have to uh, do some, somehow routing, and also I have to put somewhere all the environment variables as uh, will be the token for my, my application. So, okay, then there is also the preset for Aslan Pretty Lint stage files and style linting, which I will skip this time because tomorrow as I was preparing for the, uh, this talk, I found out that if you, oh, you don't see. How long is that? Just a second. Just a second. So, if you, if you choose a styling, then basically it will block uh, the compiling of your project. It took me just one hour to yesterday to find out this. So, for now, and we really don't have a lot of time, we will jump this over. So we don't need to any test framework, which I don't recommend in the future to use something. And then there's like two possibilities. At first, it's uh, server-side rendering. So basically, this is a universal uh, application which you can deploy somewhere on the services like NowSage or Netlify. It's a pre-render your website. So it's uh, SEO or Google-friendly, so all the bots can find the application. It's not a single-page application. There is really some uh, there are some files and some HTML pages behind if you visit the link. Or if you prefer, you can go for single page application if you're creating an application. And good news, in the future, probably next year, in the, with the uh, next three, should come also full static build or generation of the code. So we are going to for a universal application. And now, uh, as I am using a VS Code, as you can see it here, I am going to also take the recommended JS config. So now we are uh, installing all the packages on the left side, and you surely don't, you will not see which is green and which is not green. So what is, uh, what, is what was added? But basically, okay, the 9 p.m. is running. Next, uh, this will be our front end. Now we have to set up our back end. So that will be story block. So let's create a project in story block. So I just go to the app storyblock.com, and what's happening here? It's uh, if the internet is fast enough, we will see the admin. Okay, great. This is the admin. I'm already logged in. These, my, these are my projects. I don't make a lot of photos, please. And I'm just going to create a new space where my data for my new website will be living. So as uh, this is a very fast and quick introduction talk, I'm just going to duplicate a space and then explain what is happening there. So let's create a Vienna.js space. And I already pre uh, prepared something called beauty of the gem stack. I duplicate this space and I get uh, basically space of my project, of the website or something future that you will, we will deploy and where, we will where will all the data be stored. So now I have a project where is the home. This is uh, the first uh, website. So basically our index just called home for the customers or the clients who will be using this visual editor to edit data. If I click on it, then you can see that basically there's a, a page liquid is missing, so there is no template in engine behind, so we don't see any front end. On the right side, you can see that I already created some body and, and added one component called placeholder. So what, are, uh, what is this on the right side? Uh, you can see that here in the components, where you are creating the basically on atomic base or as you choose, uh, components which can be then reused in the, in your, on your website. You can combine them together and then create websites as a normal CMSs should do. Not all of them do. Uh, so at first I defined the page home where I said there is a body and this body uh, is basically a list uh, of the components and I allow to edit only the placeholder component inside. I don't require any of those uh, components inside and that's it. Then the placeholder in our case is uh, just uh, a component which holds a name. So this is like input field or uh, variable named uh, 
type of the text and the name of uh, and the name of the name and a boolean which is uh, if it's done or not and this is uh, by default false. Okay. Uh, so we have now the backend. We could create uh, like we could edit the home page and we could add a new uh, placeholder and we can say that this one is done. So let's say this is like a slider uh, component. This is uh, just quick demo, so I will not, will not be creating a real component. But as you could see, we didn't see anything. So let's go back to the to our uh, uh, to our uh, editor. The uh, front end is already built and it's uh, installed. As you can see, we can start it with the yarn dev. So let's start yarn dev, and on the local host, we should see the introduction screen of of uh, our front end in the next. So it's uh, bundling together, and now we see the introduction screen from the Next.js. We can go to documentation or to GitHub. Okay, very nice, uh, it's working, uh, we have no errors. So what's the next step? We need to connect the front end with our back end, because there is no connection at this moment. So let's add the connection. This is the npm package called yarn store, uh, story block next, uh, which uh, we'll also install, and we will, it will take a, short while, it's done, and now we have the possibility to connect it. How to connect it, it's like uh, I need to load a story block token uh, from my .m file because I don't want to push it into my GitHub repository, I, would, I want to keep it, of course, private. So, at and I need to load it also in the Nuxt.js config. Nuxt.js config is the file that was created already uh, by the Nuxt install. So now I'm uh, loading the .n file, basically config which uh, I already have because I uh, checked that .n uh, on the uh, on the by creating. So there is but no story block token. So I need to create a story block token here. Let's create this uh, story block token in my .n file. So okay, I need to get a story block token, and that I am going to get from my uh, uh, space in the story block, of course. So copy paste, save. Now I just need to also set up the uh, story block Nux connection because there is also this is a m module of the Nux JS. So let's quickly put it into modules, and this is down here, where is already as you can see there is already Axios and .env. Sorry for some super quick coding. Ah, you don't see. Now you see. So what did I did? I just added the story block nuke's access token and the cache provider is the memory. So now, if I start my front end, it should start with the uh, introduction screen and there should be no errors, but there is a connection behind. So we are still on. Okay, no errors, cool, very nice. And there is also a hot reload, of course. Okay, what next? So let's back uh, to do my notes. So now we already did, and we just need to load uh, uh, our data. I created also like uh, the cache version. This is basically that uh, we just do some caching and we just want to know if, what version of the cache we already get from the story block. So I just quickly copy some uh, cheats from the middleware. So this is uh, my store. Whereas like basically I will set in the Vuex, which is a store similar as in React, uh, I will store the version of the cache. I just put it into the store and, sorry, give me a second, copy, paste. Uh, I do not have to do anything. Uh, Next, already know that in the store are all the uh, Vuex stores files, so it will be automatically loaded. But still I didn't use it and I don't feel it. So for that, I just hit, uh, had to have something like called the middleware, which is basically running before the load of the page or on the page load, and uh, will like dispatch uh, the correct action, which is in this case load cache version. So I just ca uh, create like copy the cache version loader into my middleware, and then I need to go to the uh, next config and also enable the middleware in the router. So next config and I just added here after the modules and this will make that 
as uh, I'm routing to the website, the middleware know that I should call the cache version loader and the version, uh, cache version will be loaded into my application, or in this case, in the website. So uh, this was maybe a little bit complicated, but it's really nothing. You will do it once at the beginning on, the, on your setup and then it's done. So we still don't see anything because we didn't create any components in our front end and we didn't create any pages. So what, not, what do we need to do now is to load a data. So in the cheat, I have the file uh, folder, which is called components. And here I have a story block page, which is an abstract page, which take care of that, that how I'm going to uh, asynchronously load the data. For that, I just need to get a mode, uh, wh what version I am going to mode. So it's the published version or the draft version. There I need to get also the cache version. This was uh, what I exactly done uh, in the few seconds ago. And then also I need, to uh, uh, I need to calculate or like build the path from where I'm getting the data. So if I'm going to uh, where, where, where my page slash home, I want to get also the data from the home on the story block. So this is uh, what is happening here. And then on the mounted here, I just also uh, create a story block bridge, uh, which is basically a connection for the story block that uh, that visual editor you saw in the story block will be clickable and we can then edit our data live in uh, the story block and see the live preview of all data edited there. So let's uh, add the story block page into my components in the NUX. So I just add it here. Uh, the next, uh, as you can see here, is a page folder, which is my also router basically. And there is the introduction page I already, we already saw, saw like three, two to three times. So now I just override the code there by the index uh, from my cheats. And this is uh, doing nothing else as uh, set, it, uh, set up the edit table. So this is make that it will be clickable. You will see in a moment. And then I am uh, just getting through the body, the content of the body in the story block and loading the correct components. And as here you can see, there is like a story block page. So this abstract page and I am extended it. So uh, let's copy this, put it into our project. So I now just save it and probably we should get uh, errors. And the first error is that uh, we are loading here, sorry, a placeholder component, uh, which I didn't, we didn't have any project. So at first we need also this one, which is a placeholder uh, project, which is expecting a done, is done uh, variable. And if it's done, then it will be green. And if it's not done, it, it will be red and then also like render a blog name so that what kind of the component or something on our website is missing. This is really like a sample component for us now. So I just copy this placeholder and I add it to the components. Also the structure in the real project, it will look a little bit more complicated as this. So we have a placeholder and now we still have uh, one problem and this is uh, it's missing the helpers. And the helpers in my case are uh, those functions which are basically building the path, uh, finding out what language is open in the moment on what kind of mode uh, of the data we want. So this is also uh, plugins in the cheat. Uh, and here you can see this is like the get path, get mode and low data function. So I just copied this, uh, sorry. I copy the file and just add it to the plugins. So, okay, and now it's compiled. There is no problem. So let's jump to the hot reload and we see the two placeholders. So we hit uh, placeholder and slide component and this is already connected to the story block and loaded data from the story block. So what's next is like if I just jump to the content, uh, to the story block and I go to the homepage, I still see, don't see the live prayer. So why is this? It's very easy that we are expecting something different. So I copied the local host uh, address because we, we are now working on the local host and go to settings file. And then here in the default location, I just that location. And uh, just for the future, I already or also create a previewer for, for the local and save it. And now if I go to content, and open it, then we, sh we should see also the local host. So we see uh, two placeholders. 
and this should be also clickable. So if I click on the first one, I can edit it here. And the live you see as it's changing the colors. And also like uh, we, I can say that this will be a hero area home and it's not done. So I, am, I have it read and the future I know that, okay, I still need to work on this one. So let's save it, make it kind of publish. And this is the home page. Oh, still five minutes. Cool. Thank you. And uh, this is okay. This is only one page. How to but create like more complicated routing or something like that. So if I now create a new page, uh, which I already prepared here in components, a general page, which also have a body as it's just copy of the uh, home page in this case. But normally it would be complicated. You can say that here could be used only different components. So if I copy it and uh, create, sorry, if I create a new page here called new page, and I say it's a page general, I create it, then I should get an error and I add, add placeholder, you, I can see anything here. I don't want to make it static as I did the index because the index was already always looking for the home. But now let's do it like dynamically. So for the dynamic, I just go uh, to the page folder into cheats. I have the pages and I have this uh, underscore view file here. And the underscore view file basically match all the paths you can imagine. So in this case, if I copy this and add it to the pages, then I am now hitting all the paths on a, if I make x, y, slash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, doesn't matter. If I would write it here uh, in the pages, create a folder like test folder, uh, test uh, slash, uh, test slash view, uh, sorry, dot, then in this, uh, then of course this file would not hit the test slash something because it, the, te the test folder is now the router predefined uh, path for that and he would know that he should go to the, this folder. This is not the point uh, of this talk. This is more complicated a little bit. And here we just have the page general. So how to load the page general? I also have the uh, page general basically a template or Vue.js file, which is loading the placeholder. Also, as you can see, I am now loading the placeholder into places you could uh, load it globally and you don't see. Thank you. Uh, so in that case, I just uh, copy the page general because we need to load it also. So add it to the component and you don't see, come on. We just compiled with, uh, without a problem. We have a page general which is uh, also like uh, uh, kebab uh, is uh, here is in the Pascal case, but you just know that the kebab case, etc. not important. And now the new page will work. And now if I go and create a new page, which is type of uh, page general, so any page and I say page general and I do create, then I create a placeholder then it's hit, then it's already like getting those uh, dot template. Cool. So uh, that was very fast. I still have a few minutes. And what I wanted to show you is uh, the last thing is to deploy it because I promised to deploy it in the 20 minutes. So how to deploy it? Uh, if you already heard about NowSH or Netlify, uh, which I probably guess yes, if you work with Gemstack, then you know that it's super fast and super easy. And what we need to do basically is uh, just create a two files. So in the cheats, I have a now ignore. So very easily, there is like ignoring the next node modules lock, etc. Nothing complicated and now JS uh, a settings file, JSON file, sorry. So here I just saying the name of the file. So let's call it Vienna JS website. And down here, I just need to set also the token because uh, the token for the story block is in this case is don't, is in a, the dot end file, which is not pushed into service. In my case, now is age. So I just uh, say here, okay, let's be a Vienna. And there should be a second one. So let's be a Vienna. Okay, cool. Uh, now I can check if uh, who I am, because if I write now as a, now who I am, I will get that it's uh, the contest Samuel Snopko and the now is age is globally uh, installed on my computer. <laughs> So first of all, as you can see here, I am expecting some story block token. So how to use the story block token? And 
this is a quick tip. I just need to add there a secret. So I just copy the secret. I say you will be Vienna. And here I just need to write my token, which I have in dot and file. So I just need, need this string. I add it here. Now I hit enter. Now I'm creating a secret on NowSH under my name. So you will have to do it. Now if I can uh, check, it's now secrets list. And you can see all my secrets from the NowSH. OK, so clear the terminal. There is no, you don't see the tokens. But you could see there was a list and there was also that one thing. So what, now we almost done. We just need one more trick, and that's basically that uh, we need to define also enjoy for Navisage because you would get a very funny error. So I just hit to package JSON, and I say that okay, I want to use a Nauja node uh, about ten, about ten, and uh, one more word about the now, and then start the deployment because it will take a while. So that started, and now I just forgot to tell you one more very important thing that in uh, the now, I say, now uh, JSON setting file, basically I set up uh, the Next.js now builder, and then there is like way to set up if you want to go for production, if you do a set, if you want to do a static build or something else. So now it's everything is running. I can uh, also uh, show you one more thing, and now in this case we are uh, deploying as a universal application. So this will be basically the same mode as is the development mode, and the users will be able to click uh, through the uh, in the story block use this link as a preview to play with it. If we would go for the live. Uh, live uh, deployment, then we would use a Nux generate, which will build basically a static uh, uh, all the websites, and we can like uh, host it on the Netlify, or even we can host it on our own server where we copy paste the code. So cool, uh, looks like we are green, and uh, we, now on this link, we should see the website. So if we have a lag and everything was done, then there is the website, so this is cool. So. And still, we for the, our customers or like uh, the the editors of the of the of the of the system, basically they don't want to probably have a own local host to test the data. So create the preview URL also for them. So have a preview, and now I just uh, save uh, that now a sage link there, and let's make it also default because uh, we are the developers, we can click through the local host. And now if I go to, co uh, go to content and to home, then I should uh, see that the link here, it's uh, now getting from the now SH, so I can deploy there are some status which is like safe. Uh, they can play around, they can click and change the components and say like, okay, this is a, another component I can save or I can like copy paste this stuff. I can create more complicated uh, components and uh, deploy it all the time. And basically, that was it. Enjoy. <laughs>